Hello, you guys. Cindy here. I acknowledge our breakdown for running a few minutes behind. We've had some technological fun things this last couple days. So at any rate, we're on the mend from that. I want to hop into our topic. This week we're talking about toxic di dysfunctional relationships. How do you say that? Say that three times quickly and let me know how you do. So the number one thing to, to you know, really understand is, um, you know, how do we end up here? How do we end up in toxic relationships? So, you know, ask yourself that question. And, you know, if you've worked with me, if you're a client of mine, or, you know, if you've done some work, you, you might see that there are patterns from childhood, right? There's patterns from childhood that manifest itself, <clears throat> excuse me, into your adulthood. So on, and, and typically we're chemically attracted to people that we feel comfortable with and the comfort has everything to do with what was familiar in your childhood. So, and, and looking at those things, and, and maybe you had a really amazing childhood and your parents worked a lot. So it was up to you to do a, a lot of your own, you know, problem solving, self-soothing, things like that. And that can also lead to disconnects in relationships and healthy, toxic type of relationships that one accepts. So I want you to understand that piece. Um, the other thing is, you know, looking at it, recognizing it, how do we end up here? Well, number one, we, we get caught up in chemistry and we have loose boundaries. They're flimsy, flimsy, flimsy. So one thing's not acceptable one day and then you make an exception the, the next day. One thing I want you ladies to understand, or if you're a man listening to this and you might be nodding your head, is it's in men's DNA to push boundaries to see what they can get away with. And it's it's not a manipulation, it's not because he's a bad guy, it's literally, you know the term, we teach people how to treat us, they actually follow your lead when you teach them how to treat you. You guys might hear me say this a lot, but it's so true. Men will push your boundaries. So in the beginning, you know, get really clear. What do I want? What am I willing to accept? What am I not willing to accept? And you guys, I'm going to get into deeper next week <clears throat> around communication and, you know, how to really approach these things when it comes to dating and relationships and when you let the fish off the hook or you continue to stay there right you continue to stay there and connect it so um so we end up in these kinds of relationships because we hear what we want to hear and we don't always listen so if a guy says things like you know i'm damaged goods i can't open my heart i've been hurt too badly um that is a sign that he's closed off, he's closed for business, he's not available. Don't even bark up that tree. Go bye-bye um, because you're just going to end up in pain and misery. Everything else could be great. He could be spending time with you. And I want you to really, I want to impress upon you this. He could spend time with you like He's your, you're his girlfriend, but at the end of the day, he's got to get out of jail free card. And this is what happens in, this is one of the things that creates dysfunctional relationships. So take what he says to heart and, you know, obviously to actions speak louder than words. 
And the thing is, is if you get involved with a narcissist, narcissists are really charming. And especially an extreme narcissist, they're charming, they're fun, they seem, you know, they seem to be really amazing. They typically don't have a lot of close friends, though. So looking at that piece, too. And not that everybody needs to have a huge circle of friends, but just looking at that, that piece. So... Some things when it comes to toxic relationships, some signs that you're in one um, or that this could be dysfunctional, toxic, is intensity. So they get really intense with you. They get intense quickly. They, um, those things are just like, they're, they might be love bombing you. So they're intense, right? So that's, and they try to move the relationship quickly. If you're a client of mine, I tell you guys this all the time, move slower in the beginning to move faster later on. Does it always work? No. However, <clears throat> it's just a good, it's keep, you know, keeping the pace. And if a man is just hooked into the intensity, in love with the idea of being in love, and in love with the high highs, then <clears throat> that's not somebody, excuse me, you guys, <clears throat> that is has the tools or the wherewithal to have a healthy, sustainable relationship. Now, it's one thing if somebody's like, you know, I don't know how to do this, but I really want to learn. I want to get it better this time. Then you've got some Play-Doh. You've got something to play with, right? So... The next thing, um, so this is a big one, manipulation and jealousy, and they kind of go hand in hand. So manipulation can be done in subtle ways, like, you know, trying to influence you to do something that maybe you don't want to do, you know, influence you to you know, miss out on a family event or, you know, um, get together with him when you actually have work to do or, you know, things like that, like subtle forms of manipulation. And not to say that we all don't do some of this, a little portion of this, right? And if somebody is jealous, and what I mean by jealous, there's a healthy sense of, you know, envy or jealousy like oh you're friends with that guy i mean come on <laughs> and you know there's a healthy sense of that and there's you setting guidelines and boundaries around that so here's the other thing how else do we end up in a toxic relationship if you're not emotionally vulnerable and all in. If you're not all in vulnerability wise and emotionally, he doesn't feel safe to fully be there emotionally with you. So he's going to start to, he, he just won't go there. And men typically don't know why and they typically don't know how to navigate this the way that we do but we lead that so by being vulnerable you actually open up the door to create that you know that deep connection that you want so it's you know it's a twofold situation it's you know there are no victims here, there are only volunteers. Now, do I believe that there are some circumstances that women and men too end up in really toxic relationships that are that take you down this rabbit hole of self-loathing and worthiness issues? Yes. However, there's help. So I, I, I want to impress upon you those things. Like if we can't open the door and open up with our feelings, they can't come in and get closer. 
So toxic relationships. Ask yourself this question. Am I toxic? Am I, and this, this might not seem like the typical, how am I actually participating in this? How am I participating in the bubbling toxicity? Do I have things in my life that I use as coping mechanisms that actually create more problems? You know, a coping mechanism could be workaholism and then you're just not available, or you use a coping mechanism of alcohol, or you use a coping mechanism, it could be a million exercise, right? And not that some of these things are, are bad, there's, there's healthy ways to do it, but sometimes we use this as a form of escape, which creates the toxicity. So the next one is isolation. So this is a big one. I would say that's your number one. If you get into a relationship, and I feel like we can kind of feel it on the insides, even if we don't fully admit it, if he starts to really like not want to do things, kind of isolate you from your family and friends, um, like start to guilt you for going out and doing things in your life that make you better. Right? So isolation is huge, which then goes along with the isolation and belittling. This is a big one. Belittling will, what it will do is um, start to work on your self-esteem, your psyche, the things that make you feel like, you know, those Working on your little insecurities, like, oh, you could have done that better. I thought you were going to go to the gym today. Um, you know, are you going to wear that? I mean, it's subtle ways of control and belittling. And, you know, think about the other side to this, right? There's always a flip side. We can get into that space of then lashing back out. Well, look at you. You haven't gone to the gym in weeks. Um, and so we can participate in that, right? It's not, it's not always about them. So where do you take responsibility? This is the biggest thing. Where do you take responsibility in a toxic relationship? I think the, I believe the top two reasons why we get involved in toxic relationships, just to wrap this up like with a bow, is we're repeating patterns. We're repeating patterns that feel safe, comfortable, and they ultimately don't work. So there's negative self-talk that is blocking us from actually receiving true love. Second, we don't listen to what they're saying and we're not always watching the actions. Actions speak louder than words, right? Actions speak louder than words. So there's this, you know, dichotomy here. Maybe he's showing up all the time and then he tells you, you know, I don't know if I could do this. It was hurt really bad. You know, things like that, which will in turn, when it starts to get hard or there's conflict, I told you, I don't think I could do this. I don't think I could go there. So it's, and that is just the, the key. And there are plenty of men that will if you open up the door to do that. And, you know, there's sometimes, you know, I, I walk my clients through, you know, communication with their guys and half of the time, um, you know, they, they get to have similar conversations with their guy until he really gets it, until he really gets it. 
and I mean this in the most loving way possible, men are like dogs. You've got to remind them. If it doesn't come natural to them, it won't come natural for a while. And then you get to draw the line in the sand. You know, I was talking to one of my clients today, and she's like, I've done this. I've got it. I'm like, okay, great. Then you get to draw that line in the sand. This is what is either, you know, this is what's going to happen, and, or, you know, this is what I need in order to really move forward in this relationship. End of story. If that can't be done, I completely understand. We get to part ways. <clears throat> and it's hard because attachments are, you know, we get attached, right? But when there's all this toxicity in there, like a melting pot, and some of it can be really covert. It's like a covert narcissist that doesn't start out necessarily like that. But it's like little by little they seep their way in into this, you know, mind manipulation. Well, do you really want to wear that? Is this, you know, or they get defensive and deflect responsibility. So this is going to be my final one. I think I've said four or five of them, but this is really important. They deflect responsibility. <clears throat> so if you say, well, this is what I'm experiencing. I'm experiencing that um, I, I don't know. I'm trying to think of something. I'm trying to pull one out of the sky. You know, I, I've experienced that, um, that we've, we've talked about, you know, at least chatting every night that we're not together. And, you know, I noticed that when we're not together, I haven't heard anything. It doesn't make me feel very safe and secure, right? So these types of things, but they will they can deflect, right? So the deflection is, well, you could call me too. Well, you're, um, I mean, you know, I don't know even why I'm saying it in a man voice, but, you know, um, I did call you. You did, you know, like not really taking full responsibility, like. Right? I, we talked about going here and it hasn't happened. Well, you didn't bring it back up. So it's, it's those kinds of things, deflecting responsibility. You have an argument, you have a miscommunication, you have something. They're not taking responsibility for their part. You know, maybe there's a busy season going on and you talk about, gosh, I would really like to make time for our relationship so it continues to grow. And then they get defensive, right? So whenever somebody gets defensive, there's truth in that. There's just, there's a little, there's portions of little bitty bits of truth. And that's okay. It's just, and sometimes the role can be reversed. You could, they could say something to you and you might get defensive. And so it's just a sign, like, why am I getting defensive? Really having these conscious conversations. What's coming up for me? Why am I getting triggered? And where does my mind go? You know, oftentimes, if we've experienced heartache, our mind goes to the negative. Our mind goes to, this person doesn't really have my best interest at heart. This person doesn't really care, or whatever those things are, which can actually manifest these toxic relationships. If you, if you learn boundaries, which I'll be talking about boundaries, because they're so, so, so important, and how we can inadvertently actually push love away by not creating these boundaries that are important to us. So I hope this helps you guys. Um, thank you so much for being here. If you've experienced something where you felt isolated in a toxic relationship and you know, you just didn't even know how you set, ended up there, just, Put a yes 
be vulnerable today because that's how you get the support to open yourself up to shift that pattern. Even making a decision to shift the pattern is super duper powerful. Okay. Um, love you guys. If you're, um, and if you feel called to, please share this with a woman that you feel needs to hear this today. Like me if you're on YouTube and you happen to like what I shared today, as well as, um, you know, if you want notifications from almost our daily videos, and this is helpful, just ring the little bell and feel free to comment and ask any question that you would like to get answered about love, relationships, all that good stuff. Sending you lots of love and really working on some technology things and some things that might give you some support around um, sending me text message or direct message um, questions so I can actually support you in breaking through your uh, breaking through your love life and receiving the love that you're worthy of. Have an amazing day. Bye everyone.